Good morning, church. Good to be with you today. We're going to be back in the book of Job today. We've been walking through all the discourses, made it through all, all three, and Job is launching into his final um, lengthy discourse before we finally hear from Elihu and finally then from God as we work our way into the back third or the back quarter of this book. But Job has launched here into a hymn of wisdom, and I thought there were some things that he talks about that are worth our considering. Um, where then does wisdom come from? And where is understanding located? And before that, he says, it's not at the roots of the mountain. The miners, they dig around, and kind of an aside, it's pretty remarkable as he talks about mining and what, what they did and how it doesn't sound that very much different from the mining that we have today. He says the ocean doesn't have wisdom or the sea. You can't buy it with gold. Gold and glass don't compare to it and all the jewels. And uh, it's concealed Abaddon and death, the realm of, uh, we hear of Abaddon again in Revelation. There's no wisdom there. And so we are stuck considering that only God has wisdom and that it is God who establishes the measure of wisdom. Now we read that in the Psalms. We hear it in Proverbs. Um, we know that God is the beginning of wisdom. But when we look at how some folks try to get wise, how they try to wise up, uh, they think that if we can just understand all of nature, we'll be wise. If we can understand how the sea and the ocean currents work. If we can understand why animals behave the way that they do. If we can understand the universe and the course of the stars, then we'll have wisdom. But Job reminds us here that wisdom is in none of those things, not real wisdom. Sure, those things build up knowledge and our perhaps intelligence. And it's okay to seek to understand how this universe that God created works. But we shouldn't confuse knowledge and wisdom. To be wise, to know the right thing to do at the right time and in the right way, only God can provide that to us. And Paul talks about that in our reading in Galatians today, when he says that his knowledge was imparted to him by God, and that it was no human who taught him how to function the way he did, and that he was only delighted that it was confirmed by others. Let God be your teacher. This scripture that we read, this is teacher number one. And then there are other people. There's me, Bible teachers, <laughs> uncountable across the, the world. And there's wisdom to be had in ironing, sharpening iron. But let's not think of how the, the scientist thinks of wisdom is the right way. Let's continue to go to the one and only source as we pursue to love the Lord our God with everything that we have.